to give you one last opportunity. our variables. Subtract 7, divide by 4, and there's your answer. Now notice on the on the test paper there's going to be a blank that says F inverse equals and that's what goes in the blank. Easy. D is the harder version, same exact concept, but a harder version because when you switch your variables you have two y's and that makes it harder because your your job is to get y by itself and now there's two of them so it's going to take a little bit more work so you remember what we do bring the denominator over and distribute, distribute. don't forget you need to distribute Everybody remember that? Now we're solving for y, so remember what we have to do now? We've got to get the y over here and the 4x over here so that all the y's are together. So we have 3xy minus 2y equals negative 4x minus 1. So again, there's that answer blank, and you're going to write this in the answer blank. That's F inverse. That's what, or G inverse, in this case, G inverse. That's what goes in the answer blank. Everybody okay? All right. Given this thing that's sketched right there, is its inverse a function? Now, you got to read this question really carefully. Is the inverse a function? No, why not? Because f of x, that picture, does not pass the horizontal line test. So the answer is no, because f of x does not pass horizontal line test. <coughs> When you explain your answers, please be really clear what you're talking about. It's dangerous to use words like it. Make sure you are clear about what you're talking about. Don't say it does not pass the horizontal line test. Because then I don't know if you're talking about the f of x or the f inverse. Make sure you're clear. All right, now sketching the inverse. Up on that original picture, if you label all of the original points, so 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 3, 0. If you label all of the original points, then it's easy to sketch, right? What do we do? Flip them. So 0, negative 3, uh, negative, one, uh, ne negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 
doing her first little shape. One more. Like that. Oh my goodness, shouldn't we all get good grades on this test? Oh my goodness, we do. Easy. Create your own function that is not one-to-one. So, in other words, draw something, anything, that is not one-to-one. -one. Now, you got to be careful because it says create a function. So that means the thing you draw has to be a function, but you don't want it to be one-to-one. -one. So can you think of a shape? What? Did you say sign? Yeah. Yeah. The sign is one. Is that a function? Yeah. Is it one to one? No, because it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. Somebody else said a parabola. Is that a function? Yes. yes. But it's not one to one because it doesn't pass the horizontal line test, right? Remember to be one to one, you have to pass both tests. I have stipulated in the problem you have to be a function. So therefore you have to pass the vertical line test. So you're drawing something that passes the vertical but not the horizontal. Are there others besides these two? Absolute value. Yeah, there's millions, yeah, the absolute value B. And you don't even have to stick with your BFFs. You can just make up some random picture like this, which is a function, but it's not one to one. All right, what's next? All right, number four. Find the ordered pair when t is negative two. Well, we should all get this right. What do we do? We have to find an ordered pair. Plug it in. So if we plug in negative two, into the x, we will get 11. And if we plug negative 2 into the y, we will get 4. Everybody okay with that? Dang, good. Find the direct algebraic relationship between 1 plus 6t, x equals, and y equals 3t. Uh, Jalen says multiply y, the y row, by negative 2. So we have x equals 1 plus 6t. And then negative 2y equals negative 6t. The idea in this problem is to get rid of the t's. you got to have an equation with no t's. So Jalen says, hey, let's just eliminate the t's. So what's left? X minus 2y two two equals 1. Yeah. We're just adding straight down. These don't combine. Don't be putting them together. It stays x minus 2y. Andrew? You okay? You absolutely could substitute. So what you would do is, what I would do is, I would say t equals y over 3, and then I would just plug that right in here. Okay, all right, so now number 6. Okay, so you've got to figure out what change. We just did number 5. That's number 5. So now we're on number 6, and we got to look at the picture and figure out what changed. So kind of look at the different shapes. Um, see that little semicircle that's on the right side of the original? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now it's on the left side. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So that would indicate that we must have done a y-axis flip. Y -axis flip. But on the figure one, it's hanging under the x-axis. But on figure two, it's up above. 
which means we must have up lifted one, it up one. up one. So it looks like we did a y-axis flip and we went up one. Did we do anything else? Does that seem like that's it? Mm -hmm. So what would the equation look like that does a y-axis flip and up one? That's it. Perfect. Remember, a negative inside puts you across y and up one plus one on the end. That's the answer to the question. So when you look at the figure one and figure two, you got to, I, I would make a list of everything that changed and then try to write an equation that reflects everything that changed. And I would guess that two or three things are going to change probably. Okay, number seven, are these two things inverses? So we have f of x is 2x minus 5, and g of x is x plus 5 over 2. And we want to know if those are inverses. Okay, now I just erased it, but remember we graphed. A minute ago we graphed inverses, and in order to graph them, we just switch the ordered pairs, right? So that means that whatever ordered pairs, if these are inverses, whatever ordered pair fits here, the flip of it has to fit here. So let's make up an ordered pair. Pick an x value. Five. five. Um, you know what? Let's pick a different x value. Because five gives me five and I don't want anything special. So how about seven? If we put in seven, what do we get? Nine. Now, what do I do? To check if it's an inverse, I'll come down here and put in nine. And what better happen? Seven. I get seven. So what's your conclusion? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. We're gonna answer uh, thoroughly, completely. So yes, they're inverses. Because what? How do you wanna say it? because I put in seven into, whoops, into f of x and got nine. Then I put in nine into g of x, nine into g of x and got my seven back again. So somehow, in your own words, you got to describe this relationship. I got too many things going on here. Okay. Everybody understand that? You'll word it differently. Randomly. All right. Oh, now our word problems. Okay. Obviously, kids, for the box problem, you gotta have a graphing calculator. So remember, you're supposed to have one every day anyway. All right, so we've got a 12 by 20 piece of paper. We're gonna cut corners out. And we need the volume, we need the domain, and we need the maximum. So here we go, we've done this before. What's the equation of volume, Emma? What's the equation of volume? Yeah. Oh, er. Forty minus two x, and then twelve minus two x, and then x. Is Emma right? Mm -hmm. She's exactly right. Please don't forget that x on the end. Length times width times height. Length times width times height. What's our domain then for this problem? Remember, it's always, always this. And then you got to figure out what this number is going to be. 
How do you know it's six? You're right. How do you know it's six? Half the smaller dimension. Remember, you're cutting an X off each side of the paper, so if you only have 12 inches, six is the most you can cut off each side. That is your X min and max. Right here, you're gonna set up your window. This is X min and X max. So when you set up your window on your calculator, zero and six, What's Y min always on these problems? Zero. And then Y max, what do we do about Y max? Change it depending on how Yeah, so just pick a number to start with. I have left over from the last time I used my calculator, I have 500 in there, so I'm just gonna leave it. Type in my new equation. Second calc, maximum, left bound, right bound. which is find the maximum volume of the box. Remember when you set up your equation, Kyle, you're wasting her. When we set up our equation, this was y, right? So y is the volume. So your y is 262.682. So 262.682 cubic inches. And you'll round off however it says, nearest hundred. There you go. Okay, sleepy people. Next time maybe we won't have an extra review day like this. We're just sleeping through it. All right, find the final cost of your restaurant meal. If the food costs $16.75 and there is a 7% tax, and you leave, that's supposed to be leave, a 15% tip. So we're going to add a 7% tax and a 15% tip. So what am I going to multiply by? 1.07. 1.07, thank you. And? 1.15. 1.15, that's exactly right. Everybody okay with that? $20.61? Yes. mixture problem and remember when we have a mixture problem we take the amount times the percent of each of the two things we're mixing together add them up and that's going to give us the amount times percent of the final product so the percentages of stuff we're mixing are 0 0.23 0 0.52 and 0.35? Yep. How 
how much, we're trying to program to put an X here, how much? And in this case, we have 30 ounces of the 52. So if we are mixing X ounces plus 30 ounces, we're going to end up with X plus 30 or 30 plus X, whichever way you want to write that. It makes no difference. As long as it's being added, you can add it in either order. So we got X ounces and 30 ounces. So the total is 30 plus X. Now we'll solve the equation. Don't forget to distribute. This is the distributive property here. So I end up, let's see, I'm going to rearrange some things here. Anybody else get that? Yeah. Remember, you'll have a calculator to help you with all of the arithmetic, so use it. While we're here, I'm going to do one more quick problem like this. How much? Um, 18% solution to be mixed with 91% uh, solution to get 55 liters of 60% solution. This is not on the sheet. This is an extra one I wanted you can get down there at the bottom for sure you have room. But I want to make sure you can do this kind of mixture problem. Get it out. All right, so we have same setup, but this one's going to be a little bit different. What's different about this one? Can you tell? Oh, it's going to be X. Yeah, the percentages, I can go ahead and put the percentages in. The difference is yes, and then the 55 is over here. And then it's going to be 55 minus X. This one is going to be 55 minus X. That's exactly right. When you're looking for one of the mixtures, it's not an add, it's a subtract. This is the total. That's what you get when you add these together. You get 55. Right? And then you solve it like you do all of them, but that's that's the setup for that, right? So you got to be careful where this extra number goes. Sometimes it goes here and sometimes it goes here. Right? And that changes your setup a little bit. Okay. All right, finally, last year our pre-cal book cost $123. This year it cost $134. Find the percent of increase. So we got original over anything. It's change over original, right. Change over original. So that would be 11 over 123. So 11 divided by 123. Now it comes out to be 0 0.08943 the left. So that's a percent change. And we're rounding to the nearest hundred, so it'll be 8.94% increase. Right? 
price went up, so it's a percent increase. Make sure you mark it, decrease or increase, whichever it is. Got it? All right, one more page. Now we're gonna graph. So, we have our original picture, which this time is a giant trapezoid, and a medium-sized triangle, and a tiny trapezoid. All right, so here we go. Number one, or A, says this. Oh, Emma? You take the trapezoid and you just put it on the other side. So in other words, you copy the right side and then mirror it on the left, right? Mm -hmm. So you are exactly right, Emma. She says copy the big trapezoid exactly as it is. That's the right side of the picture. And then redraw it over here. That is exactly right. That's the answer to question A. Yep, that's all we had to do. Now B is another absolute value, but it's handled differently because it's the absolute value of the whole thing. So what happens here when we have the absolute value of the whole picture? Bottoms go up, so everything up for this one. Everything up. So the trapezoid is already up, and the triangle is already up, but now the little trapezoid has to come up. So whatever's down here just gets folded up. Jalen, are you sick, honey? No. Okay. I know. I know. But somehow we got to find a way to stay awake. As this is for drones on. Try to stay awake. Okay, C. What are we going to do with this one? Ava, do I need to find you a new seat? No. Okay. What do I do with this problem, Ava? Um, the negative. So it goes across the x-axis or upside down. That's exactly right. And what about the minus one inside the parentheses? Oh, yeah. It moves it right. Very good. So we're going to take, and, and you can do that one step. I think maybe some of you can do it in one step, or you can do it in two. So I'm going to do it in two. I'm going to start inside the parentheses. Move everything right one. So everything's going right one. So my trapezoid. Oh, you're going to do that first. I'm going to do that first. I like to start inside the parentheses, PEMDAS. So there, everything has been shifted to the right one. And now I'm going to turn it upside down. So the answer is the purple thing. That was okay to everybody? 
So just like when we took our quiz over this, feel free to bring a colored pencil or a highlighter along or a good eraser so you can erase. things going on here. What does that negative do? This is going to go over the y-axis. But what does the one-third do? The one-third divides the width. So, see this trapezoid right here? He is three wide. He is now going to be three divided by a third, which is nine wide. And he's going to be across the y-axis. So that trapezoid is going to be over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And three times as wide as he was. So here's the trapezoid across the y-axis three times as big. Now the triangle is two wide? No, six wide. as it was originally. And it's still the same height. Yep, because we didn't change the height, did we? Nope. Where would a number go to change the height? Uh, right there in front. front. Okay, wait, I'm not done. I still have my little trapezoid. I'm going to run out of room. My little trapezoid is supposed to be nine across. One more, and we are done with this practice test. So here we go. What's happening here with this very last one, letter E? What's this two doing right here? Multiplying the height. So this is going to make it twice as tall. And this is going to divide the width. So we're going to be twice as tall and half, half as wide. So I don't know. We can do that all at once. I don't know. Whoa, twice as tall. Twice as tall and half as wide. Here we go. How tall is this trapezoid? Three, so he's going to be six, and he's only going to be one and a half across. So he's going to be all the way up to six. And one and a half across. How about this guy? How wide is he now? Two, so he's going to be one and he's too tall so he's going to be four brooks did you have a question no. yep and then my little guy he's only going to be one and a half across but he's now going to be down two
All right, so what I want you to do is I want to pass back the last test and you be kind of thinking about if there's any last